My name is Colin Austin. I've spent my now long life as a technical innovator. I was elected by the Institute of Engineers as one of the top 100 innovators in Australia. My interest is to develop better ways of growing our food so we live a longer and healthier life without destroying the planet. This may not be as spectacular as sending rockets to Mars, as clever as self-driving cars when the roads are full of maniacs in yellow utes doing wheelies, and certainly not as profitable as the artificial intelligence which works out your personality and interests. So before you have even thought about buying a new cooker, wardrobe, fishing gear or whatever, you are bombarded by adverts on the internet. No one is paying me to tell you what to eat. That's up to you. But if you want to live a long and probably more important, be fit and healthy while you are alive. There's nothing more important than the way your food is grown. You can learn this for free by watching this video. I may be a bit out of step with modern thinking, but I happen to believe that innovation should benefit the community as a whole and not be for the profits of the fortunate few. That may be a bad decision on my part, but part of the life of an innovator is making mistakes and just learning to live with them. Other people have made far more money than me from my innovations, but I'm sure they have not had as much fun and satisfaction out of life as I have. So here is how to live a long and healthy life for free. Humans are complex creatures. So we need a whole range of nutrients and biology, in addition to the energy foods, sugar, fats and carbs, which are abundant in our modern diet. We call these complex nutrients phytonutrients, and for short, we call the essential gut biology G-biota. These come from plants, or animals that eat plants, with the possible exception of B12, which comes from fungi. Modern foods like these complex phytonutrients and biology. There's a major financial incentive to maximize plant growth by adding fertilizers to the soil. But there is no incentive to add the micronutrients that either the plants don't need at all or only need in much smaller quantities than we need. In this video, I'll show you how to grow plants to varieties with all these complex phytonutrients and beneficial biology. This video is aimed at home growers and commercial growers who see the importance of phytonutrients and gut biology. This video shows how geobiota beds work and improve our health. Our bodies are much smarter than we think. They sense if we are lacking essential nutrients or biology, so they make us hungry so we eat more and store the excess as fat. This is the root cause of our modern epidemics and the solution is not to eat less, but to eat more of the food that provides the nutrients. Our guts are part of this intelligent control system which manages our bodies. Gut biology breeds rapidly, but has a relatively short shelf life. So if we feed it the right sort of food, the good critters will outbreed the not so good critters and downright bad critters. Gut food contains the nutrients that feeds the beneficial critters together with an ongoing supply of fresh biology, which acts as an inoculant. G-biota beds aim to grow gut food in a sustainable way. Beds may be dead simple sponge beds, wicking beds, or the ultimate partial flood and drain beds. They all have three layers or horizons. A lower layer of organic waste, which is a store for water and nutrients, a central layer for the roots or rhizosphere, and a surface layer for seed germination. This picture shows a sponge bed under construction. Simply dig out the top layer of soil, add a layer of organic waste, and it's best if this organic material has been at least partially composted, as labile or very young compost can contain growth inhibitors. The base of the bed should be flat. This picture shows how they can be terraced. As the organic waste decomposes, it will draw down nitrogen, so it may be beneficial to add a nitrogen-rich source, such as animal manure, either composted or processed. 
The nutrient content of this type of fertilizer depends on what the animals were fed. They are generally quite high in the classic MPK nutrients. But as modern soils are low in essential trace minerals, they can be a bit low in these minerals. That is what Biomin is for. This picture shows a partial flood and drain geobiota bed under construction. A trench is dug down to a depth of about 300 millimetres. This must be flat and can easily be tested by filling with water. Generally, the bed is lined with a plastic film, however in heavy clays with a good water supply, particularly when growing deep-rooted plants, they can be effective without a liner. The liner is placed in the trench. A critical part of a geobiota bed is the soil dam, essentially a leaky dam. A normal slotted agricultural pipe is laid on the base, then up and over the soil dam. When the pump is turned on, water is pumped from the sump into the other end of the ag pipe. The bed will flood to the depth of the soil dam, but any excess water will be returned back to the sump, so the bed is never over irrigated. When the pump is turned off, the water will drain out through the leaky dam, so there is never any stagnant water. Water wicks up from the flooded zone to feed the plants. Actually, I say water, but it is really a compost tea full of nutrients. Gbiota beds work on the Goldilocks principle. Not too dry, not too wet, just right. The base is then filled with organic waste. This is essential to breed up the beneficial biology we need in our guts. One of the challenges facing modern society is how to recycle organic waste particularly food waste. When our grandkids grow up, they will not believe we were so stupid as to put it all into landfill, where it creates toxic gases. Decomposition can be accelerated by adding a high nitrogen fertiliser, however this typically does not contain many of the essential trace elements. A typical geobiota bed is about 1.5 metres wide and up to 10 metres long. That will need about one bag of high nitrogen fertilizer. Now we can add the soil back into the bed, mixing it with biomin, which contains a combination of the essential trace minerals and an inoculant for the microbiology. Up to four 10 kilogram bags of biomin may be needed in one standard bed to bring the soil up to quality. Worms are an essential part of geobiota beds. If there is food, worms can just appear, but you can order worm eggs through the geobiota shop, pick and eat shop. Eggs are a more reliable way of adding worms, as adult worms are prone to dying in transport. These two layers should be minimal till zones. Don't dig unless essential. Now we need to add the O horizon for seeding. Seeds come with their own supply of nutrient, so little need for nutrients in the O-layer, but texture can be very important for germination to get the close contact between the soil and the seed. Seeding can be done in the normal way, but I often make a slurry of fine soil with the seeds mixed in and just pour this over the surface. This is fine for high density planting, which I use to help manage the weeds and insects. In G biota beds, water wicks up from underneath and the surface should be dry. The water depth is controlled by the height of the soil dam. A dry surface means that weeds are less, like, less of a problem and it helps keep pests like slugs and snails away. However, depending on climate, it may be necessary to irrigate the surface until the plants have their roots developed. This diagram shows the basic layers in a G biota bed. The very top layer is for seed germination. Seeds need a good tilth so they are in firm contact with the soil and they need to be kept moist during germination. But once the seed have germinated and put down roots, this layer can dry out which reduces weed problems and keeps away some pests like slugs and snails. Next there is the rhizosphere layer. This is a high action zone with the plants exuding sugars to feed the soil biology, which in turn provides the plants with nutrients and water. 
there are thousands of species in this zone, but the fungi are particularly important in its exchange of sugars for nutrients and water. The bottom layer is where the organic waste is converted to soil by the soil creatures and acts as a water storage. In areas prone to flooding, the bed should always be raised, even by as little as 100 millimetres. Even if there is a prolonged flood, the roots in this upper layer will stay alive and soon regrow when the lower levels drain. The pump is best operated by a timer. In hot dry Queensland, it may be set to five times a day, while in the cooler or wetter seasons, this may be cut down to once per day. The point is that as excess water returns to the sump, there is minimal over irrigation and waste. As soon as the pump is started, the water level drops and may continue until either the float valve or the timer turns it off. The water, actually composty, is pumped to the other end of the block where it enters the ag pipe and raises the water level to the height of the soil dam. When the swamp pump switches off, the water slowly drains out of the bed and back into the sump. The irrigation cycle may only last a few minutes, while it may take up to an hour for the bed to fully drain. Minerals will need topping up, but probably 20 gram, kilograms per bed twice a year may be adequate, depending upon the crops. A much bigger issue is that the organic base will decompose, so the bed will gradually lower. Typically, a bed is about 300 metres into the soil, and another 100 millimetres above the soil level. It is important to keep the bed surface above the natural soil level to provide drainage in heavy soils. Applying more organic material, as mulches, etc., is fine, but the better way is to replace the lower layer by digging a small trench and refilling with more organic waste. The excess soil can be used to raise the bed. Hot composting requires careful management, but just letting the creatures of the soil may be a bit slower, but there's always some creature that will eat whatever is in the waste, without any effort from us. Mycorrhizal fungi are very important for soil and plant health, but if the main area is left undisturbed, the fungi will grow back quickly in the compost trench. In the video, I have tried to give an overview of how we grow plants to provide us with the essential phytonutrients. I run three websites. Gbiota.com is a technical website with many articles explaining how best to set up and manage Gbiota beds. Gbiota Club is a social website where Gbiota Club members can chat and exchange information and form local groups to source Gbiota food from commercial Gbiota growers. Pickneach.shop is the club's trading site where members can buy and sell products within the club and arrange to purchase key products from selected suppliers.